Have you ever been looking for an investment that you can easily buy and hold for over 100 years? Because sometimes such investment opportunities come around. Imagine the railroads. There's a similar thing nowadays. And Brookfield Infrastructure Partner gives us the opportunity to invest in that once in a century opportunity. The question is whether it's worth to invest in a once in a century investment opportunity. And that is what we're going to discuss in today's video. Today, we're going to talk about Brookfield Infrastructure Partners. We're going to start by taking a look into their business model because financial numbers talking about Brookfield infrastructure are, in my opinion, not as interesting as the business model. We're also going to talk about numbers, but let's start with the business model. We're going to use their Invest Today presentation 2022 for that. Please keep in mind, I've shorted that presentation. Before we start, there's just one more thing. If you like my content, please consider subscribing. Just click on the subscribe button because I try to reach a thousand subscribers in the year 2023. And with that said, let's go ahead. We are delivering another year of record financial resort. So the FFO, short for funds from operation per unit per share, increased by 11% year over year. But there's this word unit. Why is it unit? Brookfield Infrastructure Partners is a limited partnership. And that is something you should keep in mind because depending on where you live, myself living in Germany, you cannot buy the limited partnership. I mean, you can buy it, but it's crazy complicated with taxes. So that is why I'm talking about Brookfield Infrastructure Corporation today. And in a partnership, you talk about units. In a corporation, you talk about stocks. That's the difference. First of all, we can see 10% organic growth. That's lovely. I love 10% organic growth because it's good. And then we can see 10% asset rotation. We'll see the word asset rotation quite often in this video, and we will soon start discussing what asset rotation is. And that leads to a 20% FFO increase. Um, that's quite solid. I mean, 20% increase. Now, let's start talking about asset rotation. 2022 has been an active year of asset rotation. Asset rotation basically is that they sell certain assets and buy better assets. So let's say, for example, you own a shop that sells ice cream. And with that shop, you make a 5% return on your investment. And that's quite good. Yet nowadays, e-bikes, so these electric bikes, they boom. And you'd be like, should I go into e-bikes? And you say yes. So you sell your ice cream shop because you expect to make a 10% return on your investment with the e-bike shop. That is asset rotation. In my opinion, asset rotation can be good, but I personally think being like Warren Buffett, buying and holding businesses forever when they deliver a decent return is better than switching assets around all day long because every time you switch an asset, it's quite expensive, especially if it's such a large asset as Brookfield does. But what they did to do, well, they sold certain assets for 2.4 billion and they bought five new investments. The majority of that is utilities. And that has to do, to do with the fact that they bought a pipeline in Canada. I'll link an article about that down here. And here's a screenshot. Substantial asset rotation provides meaningful future growth. So what we can see is what I said. So they exit something with an initial 6% yield. And now they're going in assets that yield 7%. And they think they can grow that to 10%. So they can grow the organics to 10% growth per year. And the old assets grew 3%. So it looks amazing if it turns out to be true. You never know. And they've deployed these 2.8 billion, what we saw earlier, across five big assets. And three of them are Aussie Net, Home Service, and Deutsche Funkturm. And what we can see is that is the enterprise value, but Brookfield did not invest. Like there's a part of that 
asset, Aussie net, that belongs to Brookfield and the rest is often with other private equity companies. And Aussie net is an Australian energy transfer net. So basically these, um, the grid, these lines in the grid that transport electricity from A to B. Next we have home service and then we have Deutsche Funkturm. And Deutsche Funkturm is something I know because I'm based, I live in Germany and that is the cell, cell uh, phone tower unit of Deutsche Telekom and yeah went through the newspapers all over the place here in Germany and they also did something so they paired up with Intel and as you probably know uh, Intel is investing quite a lot of money into new fabs especially in the USA due to the was it chips act something like that and Brookfield partners with Intel because they believe it's a good investment I have to admit I don't quite know because I wasn't really able to understand how that turns out, what exactly Brookfield does in combination with Intel. If you were able to understand it or if you work in that field, please comment because I would really like to understand that what exactly is Brookfield doing. And asset rotation always has a part of buying and also part of selling and that's what they did. So they sell the US container terminals, Brazilian electricity transmission and the New Zealand telecom towers. And what we can see is it turned out that it's not quite dumb that they did that because they did a 90% initial rate on return and here even a 22% initial rate of return. So that's rather solid that investment into these assets. The question is why did they sell? Well, because they assume that their new assets yield higher. It's also something rather interesting to see is if they sell it, someone else has to believe that the asset is worth more than Brookfield is selling it for. That's why I prefer keeping them if they run. And all of that led to 11% per unit combined annual growth rate from 2012 to 2022 and a 9% distribution growth per combined annual growth rate over the time. So what do we learn? Brookfield owns all kinds of assets in, 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 in infrastructure, such as transportation, data, services like data centers, utilities, such as these transmission lines or pipelines. And that's all good. Owning infrastructure is good because we need infrastructure. We need a port. We need energy transmission. We need cell phone towers. Yet in this slide, there's the big problem with all of that. We have secured nearly two times our annual deployment target. Brookfield has the ambition to buy assets for a certain amount of money. And here comes what Warren Buffett beautifully criticized. If you buy certain assets and you have a target to deploy a certain amount of cash, it's a quite likelihood to overpay for these assets. Because I have not seen a year in which Brookfield did not sell or buy or did anything, but just kept their assets. But every time you sell an asset, again, it costs a lot of fees. Fees to lawyers, fees to the state, fees to the government, all kinds of things. And th that's why I don't like the fact that they have a deployment target. So now, like, imagine how stupid is that? Like, the... the, the the MDs or the manager the director, whoever comes in in a meeting, be like, guys, we need to deploy a billion dollars. And then all the folks sit there and be like, well, but there's no asset that we like to buy. And then the CEO goes like, oh, we have to deploy 2.8 billion. How dumb is that? I mean, that example was a bit over the top, but I hope you get my point. I'll also link what Warren Buffett said about private equity down here. And that all should lead to another beautiful above target growth. And I mean, if they achieve three dollars FFO per unit, I, I, I think that would be amazing. And when talking about infrastructure, also one thing is important. We saw earlier that they deal quite large amounts of money. So, for example, 18 billion with Aussie net. And often such deals are also financed by debt. And that's what they did. They took 
historic they took advantage of the historically low interest because I personally believe, and it's a belief, it's no knowledge, it's a belief, very important to stress. I got no clue, but I believe it might change tomorrow, that we will see higher interest rates for a longer period of time. And I don't personally see 0% rates so soon again. And what they did is they used that because what you can see here is the upcoming maturities that they have to refinance are these amounts. And they assume that the average rate is going to be 6%. And if we go on, and here, by the way, we can beautifully see this is a 10 year US Treasury yields 4%, and the implement spread using BBB English, so an index, how much more you pay for a less credit worthy investment, and that gives them a 6% rate that they have to pay. And what we can see here is how that increasement of debt, so currently they pay 4.3%. And now they have to pay 6%. And they beautifully show how that impacts the FFO. And that's going to be a problem with lots of companies. That increasement of interest rates is, I personally believe, going to be tough for some companies. Because are we that sure that rates of the Fed will seriously end at 4%? What will happen if they go to 6 7 don't know whether they go to six or seven, but keep it in your mind what the out, like what that would mean for a certain asset or investment. And now we talk about the three Ds driving deployment. And we got digitalization, decommunization, deglobalization. And these three Ds drive investment and inflation. And as they show here, three theme, three themes that could lead to persistence above average. Inflation, also the aging demographics, so labor is simply going to get more and more expensive because there are less people capable of working, and that drives prices up, supply and demand, pretty basics. So let's start with the first, the digitalization. And data is still the world's gr fastest growing commodity. And here we see that once in a century, 100 year investment cycle to upgrade capital networks, wireless infrastructure and data center. Let's talk about that. And explain what they mean with that. In many countries, such as Germany, copper cables for self, uh, for, for, for landline phones or for any kind of internet services are still the dominant way of transporting data. But they are simply not as effective as fiber. And that's the reason why many companies want to upgrade those networks to fiber. But as you can probably imagine, changing all of these copper cables is going to be ridiculously, like literally ridiculously expensive. But, and here comes the big but, once they are installed, they're most, gonna, most likely going to last for quite a while. I'm not sure whether they're going to last for 100 years, but for sure more than 10 or 20. And yes, this is an amazing opportunity because once that investment is, is placed, once all of these cables are installed, you can charge a lot of money from anyone who wants to use them. And I think that is solid. Also, if we go on, Here's what they did with the Deutsche Funkturm. They got a 30-year contract. That is good if you know your income for the next 30 years. Also, decarbonization. There's so much money going to be deployed into decarbonization in the next years that buying a Canadian diversified midstream operating short pipeline, or in that case here, um, heat pumps so that makes heating more efficient. These are all businesses that are going to be needed in large amount. And let's use the example of the pipeline again. So I personally believe that natural gas or renewable natural gas will play a major role in decarbonization. And again, once that pipeline is built, you can charge a lot of money from it. 
And that's what they did. And again, it's true. De-globalization, so the fact that more and more companies bring back their production sites. I mean, take a look what happened in China. Like, I think a few companies, not all, but if you understood that maybe nowadays smart you have different places where you produce, all of that is going to drive, first of all, inflation, because it's simply more expensive. And second, well, energy independence, that's something Europe felt. And Europe isn't energy independent. I mean, the US are. That's the reason why they export so much LNG to us. But all of that is going to cost money. And all of that is a place where investment is needed. And that's where Brookfield can deploy their 2.8 billion or how much ever they want to invest. Supply chain, same issue. Semiconductors. I mean, we know how important semiconductors are. And I think there's going to be a major investment. The CHIPS Act in the US. Well, I think also in Europe, there's going to be a major investment into semiconductors or at least semiconductor production facilities. And all of that leads to the fact, and I love that, Brookfield is the one and only growtility. So utilities companies normally don't grow, but Brookfield is a growtility, a utility company, an infrastructure company, a boring, stable business company that also grows. Now, let's talk about a few financial numbers and check whether Brookfield is an investment or not. So let's start with the first thing, most important thing about a company like Brookfield. Yes, it's true. So we got a very lovely dividend growth over time. Love it. Um, if we go over here, by the way, I just showed you Brookfield Infrastructure Partners, not the comp company, um, because the company does only exist since, I think, 2020. Now we go back to Brookfield Infrastructure Corporation. Now you can already see that that company trades $10 higher than the other one, giving them a lower yield of just 3.5%. We can see the FFO is at $3. That's something I never understand where Seeking Alpha is getting the data from, because earlier we saw that they want to achieve $3 in 2022, but Given on that data we have from Seeking Alpha, we can see they pay out roughly 50 to 60% of their FFO. And we can see they are worth almost $5 billion. And if we take a look at the chart, then we can see, yes, in 2020, I was right. Um, they went public. And since then, it's been a beautiful investment, probably until yeah, somewhere here. So December 2020, since then, it's more or less trading sideways. What does that mean for you if you want to invest? To wrap things up. I don't own Brookfield Infrastructure Partner shares as of today. Today is February 28th and my dentist appointment did just start. Fuck. Well, I sold a cash secure put, strike price, strike price 40, expiration day, I think April 21st. And I will be buying, I, I want to buy them at 40 dollars per share that thing why and um, pretty simple brookfield is a company that owns multiple assets that are in my opinion very important to keep our modern life running such as transportation railroad ports utilities data and yeah, just those three to name it and, and the whole decarbonization stuff with the home service and everything and I believe that Brookfield is really superb in managing those, is very good in deploying capital. Although I don't like that idea of we have to deploy so much capital here and there. But if you want to invest in infrastructure, I think Brookfield gives you the best opportunity for a global infrastructure investment all over the world. That's why I said global. With, with quite an easy way, you just buy shares to them. And I think especially that once in a century opportunity is quite true. So data will be a major investment. And I think they can really profit from that and make a lot of money with that. Yet, I think Brookfield should not necessarily be the largest position in your portfolio. I think there are companies that will probably perform better. But as a basic infrastructure investment, the same as with Brookfield Renewables, top investment. Can't complain. 
I'll be happy to buy them at 40 if that happens to happen. But I mind, and then I will probably buy, uh, hold them for a considerable amount of time. And what do you think? Are you invested in Brookfield infrastructure? Are you at all interested in infrastructure investments? And do you think it's really a once in a century investment opportunity? With that said, see you soon, guys. And looking forward for my dentist appointment.